Welcome everyone. In today's video, I will be continuing my Elemental series. This time, I will be sharing with you all my concept for the element of air. I'm starting off with a prepared Viperine doll from the Monster High line, and after prepping her face with Mr. Superclear, I start sketching out her eyes with red watercolour pencils. I fill in her sclera with white and her iris in different shades of yellow, brown and pink. To build up opacity and vibrance, I will be colouring the eyes over many layers. So this first layer is just to start that process. I start her lips using a watercolour pencil, but put the final touches on with a clean, wet brush. This allows me to create a really soft and gentle effect with her lip colour. I start blushing her face in the normal areas using different shades of pink, orange and yellow. I find the easiest way to create eyebrows on my doll is to start by blushing on the highlight of the brow bone. Here you can see I'm using a white pan pastel and a small brush to outline where the bottom of the brow will go. I will seal this highlight in with Mr. Super Clear before starting the actual eyebrows on a separate layer. I do this so if I make a mistake while I'm drawing the eyebrows, I can erase it while keeping the outline intact. But before I spray that coat of Mr. Superclear, 
it's time for mica powder and glitter. I always give a very generous coat of both. The Mr. Super Clear will dull it down, so I always use a very heavy hand with the glitters. I wanted to keep her face up quite light and gentle, so instead of drawing in her eye creases with a dark pencil, I use generous blushing around the eye socket and draw in the crease highlights with white. This was the first time I've tried this technique and I'm super happy with the result. I'll definitely be using it again. To create lots of depth, I use three or four different colours while sketching in the eyebrow hairs. I then use a very sharp black pencil to draw her eyelashes, and the smallest brush I own to paint in some highlights in her iris. After one more coat of glitter, I use a paint pen to dot on some extra highlights, then finish everything off by glossing her eyes and lips. For her overall design, I was very inspired by harpies, half-woman, half-bird creatures. But I also wanted to introduce a kind of insect element, particularly that of a dragonfly. I think the dragonfly really captures the idea of air well, especially with their beautiful light wings. I 
create a template of what I want her wings to look like and start to create a kind of mold by indenting the shapes onto sheets of acetone. These sheets I just picked up from my local craft store pretty cheaply. I mix up some two-part epoxy resin and start painting over the wings. To make the wings more sturdy, I add a second layer of resin. However, this time I add colour. Using mica powders, I mix a pinky shade that matches the hair I want to give her, as well as a more subtle cream shade, which has a beautiful pink shift when it hits the light. I paint these colours on in a gradient, the darker pink closer to where it will attach to the doll's arm, then adding the cream colour and finally finishing with more clear resin. Once the second layer of resin has cured completely, I can peel the wings off the acetone and give them a trim to tidy them up if they need it. I bought this doll already with no forearm, so I was super happy to be able to use her in this project. To extend her arms into big wings, I simply glue in some pink wire.
I use UV resin and torch to start adhering the wings to the wire skeleton I just made. It was pretty time consuming, but actually not that tricky, which was a nice surprise. Before I glue on the uptermost wing, I trim the wire to be the correct length. I wanted to enhance the veining details that I indented on the acetone moulds, so I draw over them with the nib of my UV resin bottle, and cure the whole thing under a larger UV lamp made for nail art. To blush her body, I actually don't start with my pastels like usual. Instead, I water down some acrylic paint. This technique will help to get in all the grooves of Viperine's beautifully sculpted, scaled body. I paint on the watered down acrylic, then dab off the excess with paper towel. This just leaves the pigment in the negative space, creating a really nice, deep looking effect. Also with watered down acrylic paint, I give her some cute white freckles. This design was kind of meant to look like tiny clouds. Her pink and white colour scheme is very much inspired by clouds at sunset, so I wanted to give a little nod to that. Once all the paint had dried, I do still go in with my normal pastels, and of course give her a layer of mica powder and glitter. To help bulk up her skeleton a little bit, I just add some air dry clay before I, you guessed it, cover her completely in rhinestones. I got this comment on my water elemental video and absolutely loved it. I knew going into my elemental series that I would use rhinestones in all of my girls' designs 
but I didn't know how much I would actually use. Although absolutely no regrets, I adore how sparkly each one of them turned out. And this girl will definitely be no exception. I start with red and pink rhinestones at her elbow and clear crystal stones at the tip of her wings. And then off camera, I create a gradient between the two. Viperine Sculpt has this hollow space in the back of her head, so before I can start adding her hair wefts, I fill it in with air dry clay and then paint over her whole scalp. In my box of yarn, I didn't have any one colour which I thought was perfect, so I mixed three together, not really expecting it to turn out right, but in my opinion, it's actually a really pretty colour and the perfect combo for this doll. The hairstyle I want to give her is a kind of faux shaped side look, but instead of actually having a shaped side, I want to give her two tight braids. I start gluing the hair wefts in the wrong direction all around where I want the first braid to go. I also create the part between the first and second braid. Using the smallest amount of glue possible, I glue down a weft along the length of where the braid will be. This is just in case any of the wefts show through. This will help cover that. I secure her head down to my work surface and start braiding. Once that first braid is done, I just repeat the exact same process for the second. With the braids all done, I can now glue on the rest of her hair like normal. To give her big waves, I trade in my metal chopstick for a thicker metal straw, heat it up with my hair straightener and curl the hair around it.
For her shoes, I created some silicone base molds and cast it in resin. I knew her design would feature a lot of pink, so I wanted to add some relief with a pair of crystal clear shoes. So to decorate, I just glue on these backless crystal stones and voila! I create the sole and straps of the shoe with the same method I've used in my last two elemental videos. I think all of my girls will end up having matching strappy shoes. For her outfit, my first idea was a toga inspired dress. Having her huge wings however made creating a removable garment quite tricky and I ended up hating the first one I made. So I swapped it for a simple strapless top which did up at the back and a wrap style skirt with a fake knot in the front. These I also added rhinestones to of course, but we're not surprised. I didn't add the footage of this though because this video is already pretty long, sorry. So with that, she's all done. I named her Sylphie. I hope you love her. If you like this doll or this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram at MrSuperCustoms. I have a lot of really exciting projects coming up soon. One of them will definitely include another addition to my Elemental series, so make sure you stay tuned and hang around to see what else I get up to. Thanks and have an awesome day.